Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another video for Eve Echoes. In today's video I'm going to be spoiling absolutely everything in this industrial update. We're going to take a look at the Noctis, the Orca and the Rorcal and answer any questions you may have about those. We'll take a look at the mining drones and the Exhuma mining drones. We'll take a look at the new mining foreman links and we'll even take a look at things like the uh, the new upgrades, that can, the new industrial modules that can be put on the Rorcal. There's a lot of information information in this one. I'm jumping into this nice and quickly. I want to give a quick blow by blow account of absolutely everything to answer all the questions that you may happen to have. I'll also try and put timestamps in the description down below um, if I don't forget to so you can use that to navigate to the information you really want right now. If you enjoy this video please hit like on it it would really help. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you want to keep me coming out with this kind of content then you can pledge to support me on Patreon or you can buy some cool exclusive merchandise on my Redbubble merch store, both linked in the description. That said and done then, let's jump first of all to having a look at the three new ships. So if we jump into the ship tree and into the ore ship tree, you should already be able to see if you're familiar with this at all, we have the three new ships on here. So first up, the Noctis. Let's go to learn more. Very cool looking ship. I do adore how this ship looks. Let's move into its attributes and fittings. First of all, the fitting profile, two high slots. No idea what you're really going to put in there, but hey, we'll see. Five mid slots. This is going to be filling up with those auto salvages, possibly a scanner module in there as well, if you fancy. And four low slots, along with three of each of the rig types. Power grid output is cruiser level, 500 megawatts, pretty good for what we're hoping for here. Nice enough cargo holds, 2,400 cubic meters, and that will get increased later, along with some fairly solid defenses, 13,693. You can see here the majority of that is in structure, with shields in second place and armor in third place. Bit of an unusual spread there, um, but very cool and uh, gets the job done for sure. Capacitors, ultimately most of the stats here don't matter too much. We can look at the signature radius just in case you do happen to get caught in combat. This is a surprisingly small ship at 117 meters. Scan resolution also, again, does that really matter because we're not locking onto anything? And we are actually not bad in regards to agility as far as industrial ships go. You're looking at 1.46 million kilograms with an inertia modifier of 1.0. The trait description though is where the magic happens. The roll bonus here, 90% jump fatigue duration. This means that when you jump, ultimately, yeah, you have less time to cool down before you can do so again. Warp stability plus two, you're harder to lock down, and a 50% roll bonus to auto salvager optimal range, meaning if you're using the standard auto salvages with 10 kilometer range, they're now at 15 kilometers already. And then we have our skill bonuses. Expert Industrial Ship Defense Upgrade is giving us 5% additional shield, up to a total of 25% in total, and a 10% increase to cargo hold capacity. 50% at full training means our cargo there of 2,400 cubic meters is actually going to be all the way up there at 3,600 cubic meters before rigs. Below then we have Expert Industrial Ship Command, Auto Salvager Activation Time Reduction, which is nice. This is the only ship to get this bonus, so that 5% reduction there, 25% reduction overall, and an additional 10% Auto Salvager Optimal Range. So this ship is going to double the range of your Auto Salvages without needing the Auto Salvager skill, which is really good. Is the Salvager skill going to be useful? Yes, it'll make the Noctis even better, but I don't think it's necessary. I think that the fact that you're going to have basically with the standard dust ones, you'll have 30 kilometer auto salvager optimal range and the 25% faster firing time. You don't really need to worry too much about the actual salvager uh, skill itself, the one that's still really expensive on the market. It's also worth noting as we go down here, and um, you'll see the source radius, 376 meters. You are fairly large. In this case, you will be easily scanned. Moving onwards then, let's have a look at the Orca. The Orca is classed as a battleship sized vessel, and you can see it here, along with some skills like the Digmaster Blazon and the Paydirt Prospector, which are skins we've seen on some of the other ships as well. For its attributes here, its power grid is typically battleship, 6,000 megawatts. We have five drone tubes that can launch large drones, which include the new mining drones that we'll get to later, alongside three high slots, three mid slots, five low slots, and three of each of the rigs. 
The cargo hold is of course as large as you'd expect, 30,000 cubic meters, and if we jump out quickly we should be able to see the ore hold. If we come down to the bottom here as well, ore hold capacity is a whopping 200,000 cubic meters. That is a very big ore hold, an excellent start there. Defenses, 136,598. This again is battleship size defense, the majority in structure, a good amount in shield, not very much in the way of armor. As we come further down, 407.5 signature radius, very big ship, large mass, low inertia modifier, making for a very cumbersome vessel. This is an industrial battleship. Let's look at its traits though. Again, we get 90% jump fatigue duration. This is if you uh, like drop your capacitor whilst jumping somewhere, you get to come up a little bit faster. I ultimately on that one. Plus three warp stability, very nice there, gonna be hard to scram it. Mining foreman bursts can be fitted, which we'll talk about later. Can also fit command bursts, curiously enough. So if you want to use standard com uh, command bursts, um, then you can do that for combat bonuses as well. So if you've got an orca in your fleet and you've got some shepherds there to keep the wolves at bay, you can actually fit standard command bursts to the orca um, and it will help the rest of your fleet as well. Obviously not just the shield ones, you can do all kinds crazy stuff here um, with that. And you get a 50% flat bonus to command burst effective range. Now here on the left hand side you can see advanced mining foreman bonus. This is the new skill uh, specifically designed for the mining foreman links. And training this will give you 3% mining foreman burst burst strength, a 2% increase to shield command burst strength, um, and a 20% mining drone mining amount, 20% drone damage if you decide to actually equip a combat drone, and 10% additional drone EHP. So having a 15% boost to the mining foreman bursts, 10% boost to shield command bursts is going to really help um, both with your fleet's survivability and with their ability to mine, and that additional 100% there mining drone mining amount, you double the effectiveness of your mining drones. Um, as we go further, the second skill is in Advanced Industrial Command Ship Command. Um, so, yeah, we've got a new skill here, Industrial Command Ship, which is going to be used for the Orca, possibly for the Porpoise, if and when that eventually launches. Again, 5% Remote Shield Booster Shield Boost Amount, so 25 at full training. 50% bo uh, Booster Optimal Range, which is insane. That's an additional 250% Optimal Range on Remote Shield Boosters. Additional 5% Cargo Hold capacity and ore hold capacity. So that 200,000 cubic meter ore hold is actually going to be all the way up once you've trained the relevant skills. Uh, what does that work out as? 250,000 cubic meters plus the cargo hold on top of that. The Orca is an absolute beast. Moving finally on then in regards to the ships, to the Raw Carl, because yeah, this is the one everyone wants to know about. Check out that. What a beast this is. Very excited to actually see this here in Echoes. If we look at the attributes and fittings, 420,000 megawatts of power grid. What needs that? That's insane. Five drone tubes, which can launch fighters, uh, fighter-sized craft, including the new Exuma drones, which we'll get to in a bit. Three high slots, three mids, eight lows, three of each of the rig types. Now the cargo hold capacity is again 40,000 cubic meters. What are our other holds looking like down here? Um, we have <laughs> yeah, yeah, an ore hold of 400,000 cubic meters flat. That is just insane. Very large source radius, 3,531. You're gonna be able to scan it down and probably it won't get alerted to you being there either. Its shields, armor, and structure are huge. Nine, uh, 910,648. I had to double check that. Was that 91,000? No, that's 910,648. The majority of which is in structure. 334,885 structure hit points on top of 260,438 shields. That's just mad. It is incredibly slow moving, 85 meters per second flight velocity, incredibly high mass there with a very low inertia modifier. This is an absolute beast. It is going to take a long time to move anywhere or do anything. So looking at its roll bonuses, it's a capital ship, 400% increase to Entosis Link activation time, means this is not good with Entosis Links, but really, were you bringing a raw carl to a Citadel capture? 90% jump drive duration, 
Um, jump fatigue duration, five warp stability built in. Jump drive is available, so you can light cyanofural fields and jump a raw carl into it. Industrial modules can be fitted, which we'll talk about later. Can operate the exhumer drones, which we'll talk about more later. Mining form and bursts can be fitted. Can fit command bursts as well, and it gets bonuses to the uh, command burst effective range. Notably, despite the fact that this ship does indeed have three high slots, main weapons cannot be fitted. So I'm not entirely sure what you're going to be putting into those high slots, but hey, there we go. Probably strip miners, I guess. I don't know. I really don't know. Let's have a look at its bonuses. Industrial Command, um, which is an interesting one. 5% mining form and burst strength, 3% shield command burst strength, basically an improvement of what we've seen on the Orca, 25% rather than 15 on the mining foreman, and 15 instead of 10 on the shield command. A 10% reduction to industrial modules fuel consumption, and um, you'll see the industrial modules later on, they consume fuel to have them active, um, so this will eventually reduce that by half. Industrial modules activation time, and um, they'll cycle 25% faster at full training, which obviously with the half reduction to fuel doesn't work out as a full half reduction to fuel because over time, because you'll be cycling faster. Um, a 25% increase to drone damage, so that is a whopping increase there of 125% uh, drone damage at full training. Um, again, drone damage. I don't think drone damage will scale with their mining capabilities, but it means if you were to fit actual combat drones on this, they are going to hurt. And a 20% or 100% of full training drone hit points. Then Capital Industrial Ship Command. So notice you get bonuses from just Industrial Command and then Capital Industrial Ship Command. A 7.5% increase to Remote Shield Booster Shield Boost Amount. 75% increase to Remote Shield Boost Optimization. Sorry, 7.5% Shield Boost Amount. 375 at full training. Um, a whopping there. 75 times 5. I can't do the math of that off the top of my head. Um, of course, it's 375, isn't it? I've just done 37.5, it's now 375. Um, percent increase to the optimal range of remote shield boosters, so that's what's going in the high slots then. And cargo hold capacity plus 25% uh, and ore hold capacity plus 25%. So that, uh, that 400,000 cubic meter ore hold is actually going to be half a million, which is just oh, insane, especially since this ship can actually go down the whole route of... Um, like compressing ores as well. Now, of course, one of the things that people are going to be asking at this point is how do these actually go in regards to the blueprints? Well, let's have a look and see if we can't find these here. Um, hopefully they're under industrial ships. They might be under some of the other ones later. So here we have the Noctis. Let's have a look at what this requires in order for us to build it. Nope, it's not going to allow me to check on this one. That's uh, not overly great. See if we can find a blueprint on the market then and have a look and see here. So blueprints, ship blueprints, frigate, close these down. We'll move to the bottom here and see if we can't find these. As I said, I am doing this video really as quickly as I can to showcase to you all what is coming. Um, and by me doing this as well, it shows that if I can't find it, why I can't find it. Noctis Blueprint, here we are. Manufacturing time is 5 hours 20 minutes. Manufacturing cost is 4 million, 40 million isk. Material efficiency 95%, time efficiency 40%. And here are your stats. So if you're interested in looking at the Noctis, these are what you need for the planetary yields and the ore requirements there. I can't tell you if that's a lot of ore and a lot of planetary yield or if that's more on the ISK. You guys will have to let me know on that. But if you want to take screenshots of that, there's the information for you there. Let's have a look then at the Orca for the same concept. Um, tech level 10, 17 hours 46. Um, I think it's 3 billion isk there. I can't count those zeros. It's making my head spin or 300,000 isk. Planetary yield requirements are there. And the ore requirements are there. So you can take screenshots of those and have that information. Finally then, the raw car blueprint. Here we go. Manufacturing time zero. Instant manufacturing. <laughs> capital ship maintenance bay, capital uh, capacitor battery, cap, uh, capital power generator, armor plates, all of these are at zero. Great. I can't tell you on this one. So by actually showcasing this one live, I can tell you kind of 
what stuff we should be looking for, but they've been smart and kept this as something that I cannot showcase to you guys. You will just have to check that one as soon as we go live. Right, so while we're in the market, let's have a look at some of the other bits and pieces, shall we? So let's start off by going into low slots and all the way down, because this is one of the things that people keep asking me about. And we should somewhere in here, I've got to remember where it all is hiding, tactical modules. These are the industrial modules that the Orc, uh, the Rorkal can fix. There are two of these. There is the Sea Lion Industrial Command Module, which if you have a look at it, that's why the Rorkal has such an insanely high power grid requirement. You can see there, um, Warp Jammer Strength 100. Um, so this is going to lock you in position. When it is active, you cannot warp with it active. Um, optimal range of 30 ki uh, kilometers increases the mining form's form and burst strength by 150%. The mining form's bone uh, burst range by 150%. Increases drone mining amount by 225%, and all drone DPS and EHP by 100% each. Shield booster goes up by 90% as well, and remote shield booster activation time drops by 40%. So this is all about health the actual ship itself. What about the seal industrial enhanced? Well this one, again warp jammer strength 100, power grid requirement 89,000 megawatts, that's huge. Um, drone mining amount 450%, drone DPS 300%, drone EHP 200%, and shield booster amount 150%. So this, sorry, the SEAL Industrial Enhanced module is the one that makes the raw Carl better on its own, whereas the Sea Lion Industrial uh, Industrial Command module is the one that is going to help boost up the rest of your fleet by improving the mining form and burst. It doesn't do as much to you directly, but does help with the fleet, so you can swap between activating those modules to depending on what you need to do. If the raw car's in a fleet, you're going to have the Sea Lion Industrial Command module active. If you're on your own, which would be a really bad idea, but if you're in a small fleet, for example, the Sea Lion Industrial Enhanced module may be the better option, or if you've got multiple raw cars, heaven forbid. Under the mid slots, let's go into drones. We'll minimize all of the other drones and look straight at our mining drones. I really like the graphics on these, by the way. So first of all, we have the heavy mining drones, which are, and the mining drones, which are for the Orca, the large style ones. So we have the Sea Urchin Heavy Mining Drone. If we have a look at this and scroll down, you'll see that this is a strip miner type mining drone. This does not require to lock on. It has a mining amount of 880 uh, cubic meters and an activation time of 60 seconds, which if I can pull up my calculator, there we are. We have 180 meters per second over a 60 second activation time. That is three cubic meters per second, which on its own is not great, but remember, these do get buffs. The Starfish Mining Drone, on the other hand then, this one has a mining amount of 72 meters uh, cubed over a 30 second activation time, which again, if we have a look at that one, that's going to then be 72 divided by 30, that's 2.4. So the targeted ones do slightly less, but obviously allow you to pick which particular ore you're going for, rather than just kind of grabbing everything within range. So we've got the Sea Urchin Heavy Mining and Ore Heavy Mining Drones. These are the strip miners, denoted by that sort of orange glow effect, and the standard Starfish Mining Drone and Ore Mining Drone on the right hand side are the targeted miners that are going to help you pick a particular ore that you like. For the Exhuma drones, however, these are the ones that are only available for the raw Carl. We have the Manta Ray Heavy Exhuma, the Ore Heavy Exhuma, then the Electric Ray Exhuma, and the Ore Exhuma. So we've got Heavy Exhumas and Standard Exhumas. And the Standard Exhumas are, again, the ones that you have to lock on with. Stats are all here. Let's have a look at how this all maths out. So again, we have an amount of 144 cubic meters over a 30 second activation time is 4 4.8 meters per second, cubic meters per second, compared to the Manta Ray Heavy Exuma drone, which again we have a 360 cubic meters here, so let's math that out, 360 cubic meters over seven, uh, 60 seconds activation time, that is a 6 cubic meter per second mining drone. 
Ultimately, you can see the difference there between these. And remember, this is before the buffs that the ship applies, which are massive buffs. So you're looking at these, uh, the heavy Exuma drones and heavy mining drones operating like strip miners and the standard mining drones and Exuma drones being operated like mining lasers you'll have to lock on. They have less cubic meter per second, but they are targeted, which of course is the bonus there. Now, what about those new uh, the new command modules? Well, let's go past the shield command, armor command, skirmish command to the mining form and burst links. They're using the strip miner graphic for the time being um, with the sort of shield icon on it. I don't know if that will change in the future, but let's have a look. So the Mark 7 version of these. Here we go. This is going to increase minor yield by 7.5%, increase optimal range by 7.5%, strip minor yield by 7.5%, and optimal range of strip miners by 7.5%. And as we go up, these should increase. Yep, there we are. 9% for the Mark 9. So the Mark 7 is 7.5. The Mark 9 is 9%. The Supervisor is 10.5%. The Ore Mining should be 13.5%. And then the Boss Mining Foreman is 15% increases. And like with Shield Command Bursts, Armor Command Bursts, and Skirmish Command Bursts, it's worth noting that the real meat of this doesn't come from the burst itself, but from the ship's bonuses and indeed the skills. So let's have a look at some of the skills next, shall we? So if we go into cruising technology and go all the way down, we've got our usual industrial ship command, freight command, dreadnought command, carrier command. Now we have industrial command ship command. This is going to reduce inertia modifier and increase industrial command ship flight velocity. And it does that across the board. You can see all levels here are basically the same thing, just at different amounts. We then have Capital Industrial Ship Command. This is the raw Carl skill, minus 35% inertia modifier, 25% 20 uh, flight velocity. And again, the same across the board as you increase those. It's still industrial ship inertia and ship flight. I don't think we have anything new under navigation, shield operation, defense. Obviously, there are new defense skills for these ships as well. If we go all the way down, industrial command ship defense upgrade, industri uh, capital industrial ship defense upgrade, help with your survivability. We will have new engineering skills, which are going to do the same thing as we come down here. Uh, so industrial command ship engineering, you can see there, ups the capacity, ups the power grid, reduces the warp requirements. Same for capital industrial ship engineering. Now, if we go into fleet support, though, you'll see we now have the mining foreman links, which again, reduce the activation fuel cost, increase the effective range, increase the yield bonus, increase the optimal range bonus, increase the strip miner yield bonus and the burst strip miner at uh, the strip miner optimal range bonus bonus. <clears throat> excuse me, as well there. So you've got all of those. And if we scroll down, we then have Industrial Command. This again is for the Raw Carl. These are the industrial um, the industrial module skills. So for the Sea Lion and the Seal that we looked at earlier, it improves their effect. Note the cost of this particular skill. This is just the basic, it's 150 million to open, and it is 3 million skill points. Crikey, what is Expert going to look like? 2.4 billion isk to open, 15,805,875 skill points to have Expert Industrial Command there at full if you're wanting to use the Raw Carl. I am going to just jump back quickly and have a look again at the Capital Industrial Ship Command and see there again, 1.5 million for 150,000. At Expert, sorry, at Advanced, it's 5.2 million, 600 million ISK, and Expert is 2.4 billion with 12 million, 644,700 skill points. These are big, beefy skills. Now, let's have a look and see if we can find where the drone skills are hiding. I don't think they're going to be actually under drones, and um, they'll be somewhere under the industrial skills here. So we've got mining, Strip mining. There we are. Mining drone technology. This increases the mining drone amount by 50% and the optimal range. Um, 25 million ISK for 632,000 skill points. If we look at advanced mining drone technology, 100,000 ISK, sorry, 100 million ISK, 2.5 million skill points, and expert, 400,000 ISK for 6 million skill points at the top there. 
These are again fairly beefy, expensive skills, and then we have the Exhumer, which again are going to be for the Raw Carl. If you want to fly a Raw Carl and you're using the Exhumer drones, then you're going to want these. And actually, I've just noticed as well, we've got this new effect, haven't we, here, where I can actually just jump between these so you can see the effect there but at top level again that's 15 million skill points so if you were insane and wanted to get the raw carl all the way up to expert five on everything you're probably looking in the region of about 70 million skill points just to get that working heck even the level four expert four is nearly three million skill points on these these are big expert expensive ships with big expensive skills and it's going to take a little bit of time to actually you know skill into these properly and get everything up and running there as well I'm just checking on the dots to see if there's anything else I'm missing it is just those skills there awesome so that gives us an idea of what you can be looking at in regards to these particular ships what you're going to need in order to build them what you're going to need in order to fly them this is a humongous update like there is so much in this and it's going to take people a long time to be able to effectively deal with these I wonder actually if we jump into the store they were talking about some new effects there some new things that you could buy that may help with that so if we go into the hot I don't know if this is upgraded here. We're going to take a look and see if we can find what they talked about. I don't think it has because the Lazarus unit supply was supposed to come out as well. No, they were talking about some packs that would help you to actually respec into these industrial ships there. Um, in regards to events as well, these don't show up here on Fulmination. I can see if I come down here, the major updates now showcases the three new ships, but that's about it. I can't tell you anything regarding the events. So hopefully that gives you some cool inspiration and to understand what it is you're going to be flying, how you're going to be flying it, and sort of what you're going to need to invest in order to do this. Now I'm sure some industrial minds more intelligent than I am, um, more in the know of how all this can work, can tell you exactly if it's worth it for most people or how you're going to do these things. So if you're aiming for the raw carl, you now know the materials. Well, no, you don't know the materials to build them, but you know the skills at least and how it's going to actually operate. If you're interested in the orca, then you do know the skills to build that and how you're going to fly it. And the same for me with the Noctis. I'm really excited to flying this one. I'm looking forward to some salvaging. Anyway, folks, this is 26 minutes long. I am going to stop this one here, rush this out as a nice video for you all, a little in the middle of the day video for once um, to help people get excited for this new industrial update. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And again, if you want to help me do what I do, please come support me on Patreon. You'll get your name in the end of the credits of each uh, video, just like these people you're about to see now. Thank happy sailing, folks, and see you in New Eden.